Hello. I just filmed the first 10 minutes of this video, but I didn't hit record. So starting over. Hello, I am an aunt. Times two. I am an aunt again. We have my three-year-old niece, Charlie, who I speak about frequently, who is literally my favorite person in the world. And then as of yesterday, we have her little brother, James. Uh, and we got the call about uh, nine o'clock yesterday morning. My sister was heading to the hospital. She had just dropped Charlie off at preschool. And me and my other sister were tasked with watching Charlie all day while she gave birth, okay? Because only her husband could go with her. No children under 12 are allowed at the hospital right now because of COVID. Uh, so me and my other sister went and picked her up from preschool. She was confused. She didn't, she didn't understand why we were there. And um, we, uh, we had previously asked, oh wait, no, I back up back up, I'm missing a part of this story. So me and my other sister get to Charlie's house, right? And her preschool is just a couple blocks away. So I called the school and I said, um, uh, hi, I'm Charlie's aunt, I'm coming to pick her up. I'm on her emergency contact list. Uh, when is school out? Uh, and so, and she told me all that uh, and uh, then we messaged my uh, brother-in-law and said, hey, good news. We figured out the school thing. Don't even worry about it. We're going to pick up Charlie. Keep us updated. And he messaged back, he just popped out. So my sister got into the hospital, like to the emergency room at 9.50 and she gave birth at 10.23. <laughs> So she just got it. She said they didn't even put her in a wheelchair. They just grabbed her out of the car, put her on a gurney, just wheeled her straight in there. And she was like, pow, just kidding. It was, it was a little bit more, it was a little bit more involved with that. Um, it's obviously, it's highly stressful on her body to have a baby that quickly. Just, I'm not gonna share her, share her information, but let's just imagine that you very suddenly uh, passed a seven pound uh, bag of flour through your vagina. Let's just imagine that in, in a half hour, you just, you got that thing out. And then it's also very traumatic for the baby too, because it's like, you are, you know, sort of, you, being birthed is one of the most physically dangerous things you do in your entire life and you got to rush it and there's cords and there's and there's blood and tight spaces and you can't breathe and all that sort of stuff so mommy and baby are just fine though so uh yeah so they they messaged us they were like oh he's out he just came out already and we we still had to like wait a half hour to go pick up Charlie from preschool. So we, <laughs> so we were like, should we tell her what? And uh, they're like, no, don't tell her. We're going to tell her later. And so we went to go pick up Charlie. We're aware of, of what has happened, but Charlie just comes out of school and was like, what, why, why are my aunties here? Uh, and we were just like, okay, we're going home now. And she didn't ask at first. She was just weirded out. She was like, where's our car? And I said, oh, well, mommy and daddy took the car. They were at the doctor's. And she didn't ask any questions from that. And um, she's been so cute. Like I, when we were in there, we talked about, we talked about James, James the baby, James. And uh, she's, you know, she'll tell you what he's gonna be like, what he's gonna say what toys he's gonna use, you know, that they're gonna go to the park together and, and all this sort of stuff. And I, and I have to tell her, um, my medicine alarm is going off. I have to tell her, okay, James isn't gonna be able to walk yet. He's not gonna be able to talk yet. He's pretty much just gonna lay there. And she said, no, no. So she's three, she understands all about babies. Um, but yeah, so we, 
we went home, we ate some carrot sticks, uh, we watched a little bit of SpongeBob, and then we decided to go to the park. And while we were at the park, uh, mommy called with baby James and Charlie got on the phone and she, <laughs> uh, what'd she say? She said, he popped out. And, ah! and then she like screamed and she was laughing and just like doubled over like, ah! Ah! like it was such an explosive amount of emotion uh, from her like she understood what had happened she understood who James was and she was very happy and excited um at that time at that time and I bought her an ice cream cone from the ice cream truck and she we just had a great day we came back we uh my mom uh couldn't stay let's say that she couldn't stay so she cooked a bunch of food and so she just left me and my sister and and charlie alone with a bunch of food for the rest of the day and um this is day i want to say excuse me i want to say six of vacation i haven't weighed myself but i tell you what i must have gained 10 pounds honestly yesterday i ate um I don't even know. Dudes, I don't even fucking know. I mean, I'm just gonna say it's probably close to 3,000 calories worth of food. <laughs> uh, and, um, anyway, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna be the one who looks like I'm pregnant now, I guess. Uh, anyway, so then, uh, Charlie's daddy came home and we all got to go home. And, uh, when I got here to my apartment, the music in the bar across the street, which has been a frequent guest of this vlog, uh, was so loud and so irritating for three hours. And after I had been in like such a hyper stimulating environment and situation and, uh, you know, just running around thinking about babies, I'm at the park, I'm at the ice cream truck, I'm watching SpongeBob SquarePants, I'm, I'm drinking four cups of coffee and taking a Xanax at the same time. And then I, and I'm worried about my sister and the baby and, but then everything was fine. And my mom was there and you know, I don't get along with my mom. Um, <laughs> but we're civil, of course, we're a hundred percent, um, friendly and civil because of the, of the baby. We can put ourselves, actually it was, it was, uh, when my uh, niece Charlie was born, that was the final argument that, totally split me and my mom's relationship day of her birth at the hospital we got in such a fight uh, but I'm glad that no one mentioned that this weekend because that would have been really awkward um this weekend I don't know what day it is it's Friday right now I've been on vacation so it's just been one long lost weekend for me uh but yeah when I got back here last night the bar across the street was playing the most aggressively terrible music so loud like I can I can close the, I can close the windows I can play white noise I can put my headphones in it doesn't matter I can still fucking hear it and I have like this is a specific trigger for me this is like it's a trauma trigger for me um because I grew up in a home with domestic violence and when I would try and be going to sleep at night, um, I would be forced to listen to sounds that I didn't want to listen to. Well, again, I'll let you use your imagination on that one. So now I have a, 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 um, insane rage response to being forced to listen to sounds I don't want to hear. And I don't want to hear this goddamn music anymore. I know some people, it wouldn't bother. Oh, it's a little music. Oh, I can close my windows. I can't even barely hear it now. No, it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't matter to me. So today, I went over to my sister's house. I met the baby. It was very cute. Um, Held him, you know. Uh, I like babies. 
I like babies, uh, but there's not a whole lot to say about him yet. I met him one time. He uh, is very small and very cute and he's, and I held him and it was great, you know, but like, and I, I like babies and I'm like, he's my, he's my nephew. I would die for him, you know? Um, but I, I just don't have that much to say about him because, uh, you know, we've never spoken. Um, I don't know anything about him. I don't know his likes. I don't know his interests. Uh, he can't see more than a couple inches in front of his face. Uh, he doesn't know who I am. Uh, I tried to make a really good first impression. I wore my most beautiful orange dress that I own. Um, but he didn't even see it and, um, kind of rude. He didn't talk to me the entire time I was there. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, I guess I, I held, I held him and it was, it was cool, but I just don't have that much more to report at this time. Um, and the reason I say that Charlie was excited for now, um, when we were at the park is that when we actually, when James actually got to the house, cause I was watching Charlie again this morning, um, she was not excited to see him all these months of preparation. And she was like, no, no, take him back. I'm not a big sister. I'm a tiny girl. Literal direct quote. I'm not a big sister. I'm a tiny girl. Bring him back. And, uh, as an oldest sibling, I really highly sympathize with that, with that sentiments and it kind of drives me crazy because it's like my I, my unnamed family members who i will not name were kind of giving her these same um the same kind of uh pressure that i always resented so much as a kid like uh you're oh well you, i know that you can be a big girl and do this because you're a big sister now i know oh you, you know it's like I feel like uh, eldest siblings sort of get, sort of get, um, I don't know if, it, I don't think this is the proper use of this word, but they get kind of parentified towards their own younger siblings. Like Charlie is not any more responsible or developmentally different than she was a week ago. And having a younger sibling doesn't make a small child more developed than they are. And I'm not saying that it's like, it's not that deep at all what happens today. I think it's sort of bringing that up for me though, is that like, she's, she's still three years old. We don't, we don't have to tell her that you're a big sister now, be a big girl, that kind of thing. Uh, because she's three and she doesn't know how to process her own emotions and she needs the exact same kind of care that she had two days ago, you know? But that it's not that deep right now. It's not that deep right now. It's just, I was kind of, I was just kind of hashtag triggered today, I guess. But anyway, back to the music. I finally fucking had it. Guess what I bought? That's right. I can barely hear my own voice right now. I didn't get these. These are not, um, these are not headphones or they're not music headphones. This is safe. This is industrial, uh, level safety gear for ear protection. I can put these on. Oh, where's that music? Where is the music now? Huh? I can't hear it at fucking all. I, I love this purchase so much. I feel like this is just going to represent an instant quality of life improvement for me. Uh, it already has improved my life. I wore it tonight with the music and it was just great. I am able to totally have silence for myself and, um, I can even, let's see, I can even pop in my earbuds underneath. Boom. Now I have silence. And I can listen to music at the same time. This is a freaking dream come true. And all I had to do was go to Home Depot. <sighs> so 
this has been an eventful couple days for me. Oh, I'm already at 15 minutes. Oh my God. <laughs> um, okay, well, uh, happy September 10th, everybody. Uh, just as a, uh, I would just like to make a small PSA before I go about tomorrow, the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Um, I am begging you, if you were not directly involved in 9-11, Please don't feel the need to share your 9-11 story. Those stories are not interesting to anyone. No one wants to know where you were. No one wants to know how you felt. Okay, unless you were there. Unless you have something interesting to add. Unless you uh, know, may, may, maybe know someone who was there. Other than that, just can it. Oh my God. It's millennials especially. Everybody knows you were in school. All right. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.